Greetings and welcome. I'm Apostle Julie Harding, an ordained pastor, and this is Come to the Fountain TV. Today the topic that I'm speaking on is accountability. Are you doing things um, in an upright order? Are you, uh, for example, are you, are you being honest on your taxes? Are you being honest to your spouse? Are you being honest to your parents? Are, are you withholding some things from people that, that you know that they um, would change what they're doing if they knew the truth? Um, accountability is, is an important facet of God's character and it, um, important to know um, that God um, holds us accountable and, and as leaders we should be holding other people accountable and we can uh, love and forgive and also hold accountable. Um, it doesn't always work or turn out the way we want to, even though we take the steps to hold somebody accountable. So today I'm going to give you the scriptures, the Bible verses on some of the things that uh, we can do to see where God is in holding people accountable, to see what scriptures He will teach us or use if we ask Him in prayer, what should I do in this situation? or uh, maybe he'll bring back to your mind a situation when a scripture comes up that he'll say this is how you handle that. Or he will give, when I'm talking about a scripture, he'll, he'll say you handle that like, like I said in my word. And he might show you and confirm to you another way to handle something or to handle something differently than you were intending on doing it. So as, are you um, holding yourself accountable? Um, sometimes you can hold yourself accountable with a, a prayer partner or with an accountability partner for many different reasons, whether it's in business or whether it's uh, uh, to be in a, a recovery group or, or you struggle in an area of sin in, or you're just growing in the things of the Lord. How are you holding yourself accountable? Do you have things in place as a team member? Or are you watching? Or are you just letting everything else slide even though God has you in a position as a watchman maybe in your job and you, you're seeing and, or overseeing people that are not doing things right or, you, they're, or you're seeing somebody uh, stealing from the company or um, you're yourself doing some things wrong, maybe even a paper clip from the company or a pencil or those types of things. But, you know, embezzlement is serious and that's uh, more of the serious nature. But if you're going to take something little, you'll probably take something bigger. But you should use uh, common sense in, in those things and not take anything from your employer or from, from anywhere, from the stores. Um, people don't realize that God is really big. His eyes are open. He can see everything. So if you've done something wrong, it's okay. Just repent and um, ask God how to, how to correct it, if there's a way or anything He wants you to do. Um, and He might give you the steps of obedience to take in that situation. So as we hold ourselves accountable, we can sometimes hold other people accountable. And when we hold other people accountable, we have to check ourselves to make sure if we understood what we learned in our lesson in that area. Um, so we offer forgiveness, uh, grace, um, and humility. Uh, but then sometimes we have to say, uh, stand up and say, no, I'm not going to do that and set a boundary. So the topic today is accountability. I'm Apostle Julie Harding, an ordained pastor, and I'm going to give you some Bible verses today. Are you ready? How are you using your talents and your gifts from God? Let's go to 1 Peter 4, verse 5. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Let's go back one more verse. Oh, let's, let's do all verses 1 through I have a lot of Bible verses to give you, but some are just short like that. 1 Peter 4, verse 1, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he hath suffered in the flesh, hath ceased from sin. Verse 2, That he no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Verse 3, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, 
revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Verse 4, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. God will hold everybody accountable. He's the creator. He created us and he can, he's omnipotent. God can see everything. He knows everything about you. He knows what you've done in the past and he knows what you'll do in the future. He'll knows how you, he knows how you'll try to get out of something or how you will um, just submit to his perfect will. So it's just easier to submitting to God's perfect will and, and um, he will hold us accountable. I think um, this is an important topic because a lot of um, things go on in the world. And in 2011, God spoke to me and said, the reason there's so much corruption in America is because the apostolic covering is not holy. And that was after he asked me to start using the apostle title. So I knew what he was saying is, you know, he's placing me in be, um, uh, because of uh, the call on my life, the anointing on my life, and walking in purity and holiness to be filling the breaches and the apostolic covering so that he could do some more things and uproot the things he hasn't planted on earth, the corruption. God did not design that, but man did. Man's greed and corruption um, and uh, dishonesty, those things, um, God will hold everybody accountable. So it's easier just to say, you know what, I did that wrong, or, and we all do things wrong. I'm human. Uh, as an apostle, um, uh, what he's also told me, it's okay for me to make mistakes. However, I do not want to make a mistake with the Word of God in teaching His Word or in, um, in somebody's life that hasn't given their life to the Lord yet. I do not want to make a mistake and be the reason that they haven't given their life to the Lord and they never make it to heaven. So I, I speak the truth in love and God has told me not to apologize for speaking the scriptures when He tells me to um, correct somebody or uh, edify them and lift them up if they're offended, even at the good that we're doing, it's their problem not to apologize for it. So as he'll hold me accountable to teach what he's given me to do. He's blessed me with the, the mantles that I need to do what I'm called to do and the resources that I need to do what I'm called to do, he provides. So I am totally dependent on God uh, for my health, my healing, uh, um, my life, and where I will go, I am totally dependent on Him to take me home to heaven when my time is done on earth. As we all have to go through some things in life about letting go, um, sometimes there's a new season for us and the enemy might try to bring back bad things and uh, keep you in condemnation or guilt. However, that could also be God saying, I need want to set you free from that. And so sometimes we just have to speak the Word of God. I have the King James uh, that I'm using today, uh, reading it off the computer. It's easier on my eyes. And um, reading out of a, our, it's actually 20, Accountability is a 28th chapter in our second book, uh, our Discipleship Manual. And I'm just, uh, you're looking, if you're watching me, I'm, I'm looking down at this little booklet. It's actually our Discipleship Manual, uh, chapter 28 for accountability. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 4.1. In 1 Corinthians 4.1, it says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. We are stewards of God. We are, um, no matter what level you are, where, where is your place, where your place fits in with the body of Christ, no matter where you are placed in the body of Christ, we are to be stewards of God, stewards of His love, stewards of His resources. Um, and when He gives us a blessing, to be thankful for it. I think that's really important to just say, thank you, God. I'm coming to you, God, just to say thank you. Um, a lot of times people go to Him when, you know, when we're wounded or weak or we need something, but it's okay to just... Uh, uh, go to God and just say, thank you, God. You've trusted me with so much. You've given me life. Thank you for the good life you've given me. Thank you for the joys, those types of things. Um, let's go to um, Titus verse, 
seven. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, no, not given to filthy lucre. Verse 8, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Verse 9, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Okay, God is saying a lot here and about accountability. And if, even if you're not um, a bishop, you might be an overseer of a business. Um, you might have uh, be an owner of a company, a uh, CEO, or, or even the male person. Each person has a measure of accountability to do their job. The same measure to be accountable as a male person as the person cleaning the bathrooms, as the person um, uh, fixing the vending machines in the business, or, or the, the CEO. So as, as God watches, he can see all things. And this specifically, I will reference the church. Now when God deals with uh, judgment, he's, his word says he, he will judge the church first. So if he's judging the church first, um, and his people first, he wants us to be good leaders. He wants us to be accountable. He wants us to um, have clean records. He wants to have clean hands and, and uh, pure hearts, pure motives. And he looks at all those things. And, and we don't always know we're being tested or in a trial. But when we realize um, that we need God's grace, that he knows everything, we should really be just thankful for God's grace and say, okay, God, I messed up. Um, help me turn this situation around. As we're talking about accountability today, I'm Apostle Julie Harding and an ordained pastor, and this has come to the Fountain TV. And I just uh, would like to also uh, speak directly about just the church. As leaders, um, I see I see things, and, and I go into different churches, uh, even as an apostle for the last uh, six years, when I see something, God might show me in the spirit something like a bishop putting his hand in the uh, offering plate. I don't go run right to them and accuse them. You know, so I, I discern whether that's God and I pray for them because I do not want them to perish and I do not want them to take God's money. But if there's a problem in that church, maybe all I'm supposed to do is pray about it. So as a watchman, I pray about it and discern and and if I'm in that house more than once or whatever, then God will minister to me what more to do with that, or I ask God what to do with that. As he shows uh, apostles and people things in the spirit, he might show them a dream or vision. Um, and it doesn't have to be the actual church building. It can be a ministry or, an, or a group of people meeting together that uh, think that they can uh, do things outside of God's word, outside of God's law. There was a time then I saw a uh, Christian group, a singles group, they were going to have an event at a Unitarian church uh, that does not lift up Jesus, and they told people to bring their wine and their beer. So that is not God. And God gave me the foundation of the principles was to speak about those things. Luke 1.15, uh, John the Baptist never even let wine touch his lips, and it was his job to lead people to the Lord. And Daniel, he got the best gifts because... Um, you know, God purified him, and he didn't want the king's delicacies in wine. He, he asked just for the vegetables and water. So as he was tested, God refined him, and he, God gave him the pure gifts. So when you're in a church, you need to know that if they're not preaching the truth and purity, a pure message, uh, a holiness message, uh, then they need to be corrected, and God needs to do some things in that church. And sometimes all you have to do is pray about it, and God will change that thing. Sometimes God asks you to go say something to them. Or if you're the pastor, sometimes somebody has come to you and, and said, this is going on, and you ignore it. You don't pray about it. And you say, I'll pray about it. And then you, you reject the person that has brought you that very important message. And you go, align yourself with those that are willing to be tolerant to sin and, 
and not hold people accountable. And it, it, it grieves me to see so much sin on leadership teams. It grieves me to see in singles ministry where they place uh, people into the singles ministry as leaders, the pastors do, and then they oversee it, but they allow the fornication over and over and over again. Some churches I've seen four or five times, and I try to mind my own business, and even when I'm at home, God has given me a vision of a woman having black underwear on. That's not what I want to see, and that's not really what God wants to see either. But people are supposed to be good examples of Christ's character. And if you're going to be held accountable, God places some of us here on earth as apostles or even lay persons to hold people accountable in the marketplace, but in his church, he uh, is grieved by the sins going on, the fornication, the apathy, uh, the adultery. And in singles ministry, I've seen in two situations where I held, I had to hold somebody accountable, which rejected me for doing that. Um, and there were actually three situations. I went to three leaders of different groups because they were allowing one man to lead and um, they allowed a, man, a married man to come into a singles group to look for a, uh, uh, women. And they allowed him and then eventually found one and they allowed both of them to lead uh, the group. So um, as that was grieving to God, God asked me to take the steps to hold him accountable. And um, my reward is in heaven. But as I'm rejected from the church and kicked out of places and told not to come back, because I'm doing what God asked me to do. That's the most important thing to me. I have to do what God asked me to do. I know the word, and we're supposed to restore people in gentleness, but we can't restore them if they're not re willing to repent. And the same man in particular that I saw in three, three situations, leading in three different churches, or three different groups, two churches and one group, leading on those teams, um, going to counsel people, which is a fourth thing that he was doing, when he himself was in a, the sin of adultery. The Holy Spirit opened my eyes and said, they're in the sin of adultery. What are you going to do about it? And I had to take that message to four, uh, to three leaders. And uh, in the process of that, I had to discern what to do. And I went to another apostle and I said, this is what I believe God is asking me to do. What should I do? And he said, you have to do that. And then another situation came up with the same group of people with fornication on their leadership team. And I had to, I had to process that differently. And I got rejected by the groups and banned from the groups. And they aligned themselves together because they can sin and get away with it. And they want to lash out at me telling me that I'm not an apostle. So as I'm working through that, the same man that was um, in the sin of adultery, I didn't just go in and make it my business. God had divinely placed me there. The man had come to me first and asked for prayer uh, to, for a miracle to restore his marriage. And then I'm watching in this process and the Lord is revealed to me, he's in the sin of adultery. And I went, oh, then I had to, then I had to uh, take the action with the three different groups. And while I was involved in one of the singles groups, I observed this man saying to people, boasting, when somebody asked him about him dating uh, this one particular woman, um, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So he misused God's word, and he was still married. And so I had prayed for him to, for a miracle to restore his marriage. And then I'm watching and hearing these things from this Christian man that's counseling other people and counseling couples. As I, I learned and grew with him, this is what's going on in the body of Christ, and it's not of God. And if God places an apostle in the land and you don't adhere to it, you'll be held accountable. My part is finished. I did what God asked me to do, and I'm still doing it, imparting that truth to you on what's going on. If you're a pastor or a leader, you need to know where your sheep are. Are they in beds of people they don't belong in? I've been to other churches where they say, well, that happens here. Well, why are you not bringing um, them into correction? Why are you not holding people accountable? There's enough scriptures here to say um, the truth. 
Uh, other people have come to me with situations, and God has just blessed me with, with these uh, things to teach on. They're a truth, not just out of the Word of God, but examples to give you. A woman came to me and said they're voting in two more elders of their church, and they both drink. I don't want to vote for either one of them. And, and she was having a hard time at that situation. And I grieved in the process, and I, I know that the heart of the Father was not in that situation because that church has a recovery ministry. And when you put people on a, a board of a ministry and you have a recovery ministry where your own leaders are drinking, you cannot possibly bring all the glory to God. You cannot possibly do what you're called to do. And in that situation, the male, there was two, a man and a female that she didn't want to vote for that was, were drinking. She also reported to me that um, he was giving minor children alcohol. So as I'm imparting uh, this gift of accountability, you may be going, okay, uh, you're speaking to me. God is speaking to me. You may be angry at me right now, but my gift is a blessing to the body of Christ. It's so people don't perish. It's so people don't have the lack of knowledge. It's so people can um, uh, clean it up. It's so God can uproot what he hasn't planted. And so the very people that um, have cursed me because I've done what God has asked me to do, I can't worry about anymore. I, God gives me the healing that I need uh, in my soul, my body, mind, and soul. I'm totally dependent on Him for that. But He's asked me to do some tough things. And when I have to go into churches and, and the leadership team, um, I'll preach on, on the message, the dirty message. They'll preach alcohol. Uh, is okay in the counseling uh, sessions with their, their congregation. They don't want to lose people, but you better tell them the truth. Homosexual marriage is not of God, and people can die in perish and go to hell without finding Jesus and without repentance. So um, if, if church is just a business and just a way to fellowship, then it shouldn't be called a church and it shouldn't be in a God's house. Just have a fellowship group somewhere if you're going to sin, if you want, if you know that your sin is going to lead you to hell. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. If you've got your Bible handy or your pen handy, you can write that down. 2 Peter 3, 9. It's not God's will that any shall perish, but all come to repentance. So as I'm, I preach repentance, I also preach the grace of God and the, the love of God. As I uh, just so often, when I get through those situations, God gives me a blessing. He'll fill my home or my my bedroom with love, the love of Jesus, or Jesus will be standing in my room, and I know the anointing that I was just visited while I was sleeping, uh, the love is still there. He'll give me an open vision of a beautiful rose, and that I'm in the middle of a beautiful rose, and, and after all of these attacks by the body of Christ, um, He has given me words from another, well, this was a female apostle, um, that, to strengthen me, that uh, my passion uh, was like uh, a burning fire to him, a passionate burning fire. Uh, my, the, so as I do what I'm called to do, I'm a retired construction worker, just trying to pre please the Lord and disciple people and educate people uh, in a healthy way. Uh, the things that we're teaching are not to uh, destroy uh, anything good. It, that God has given you, it's to destroy the devil's camps, and the devil has to let go. The Word of God says, uh, abstain from evil. I'm going to read from Luke 16 right now, starting at uh, verse 1. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee. Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. Verse 4, I am resolved what to do, that when I am put on out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Luke 16, verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors to, unto him, and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. 
Then said he to another, How much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill, and write four score. Verse 8, And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their ge generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, Make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Hmm. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Verse 13, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Verse 16, The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. And it is easier for heaven to, and earth to pass than one little than one tittle of the law to fail. Whosoever putteth away his wife, and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple, and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, and he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. Now, But now he is comforted, and thou art, art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that which would pass from hence you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went in unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the, from the dead. So if somebody has been in hell and they rose from the dead and they want to go share the um, uh, the message. That's you know God's grace, and you know God will hold people accountable. And hopefully, uh, by um, um, repentance, people will find their way to heaven. And as the word of God is important to know, um, it's a, a guide for us. Hold yourself accountable, and then if God allows you to hold other people accountable. 
uh, first pray about it and then do what he's asked you to do. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the world and in the church that shouldn't be going on. Um, be a good steward, uh, be accountable to others and um, judge yourself and uh, know those who labor among you. So if you're amongst a, uh, some people that are doing wrong or um, and you know you shouldn't be doing that, get away. Pull away, um, ask God for help to get pull, pull away from that group of people or, or that sin, whatever you're stuck in because once you pull away and you give it to God, He will help you if you ask Him, God help me with this, help me with this. Sometimes He'll say, I am helping you because He's working with you to um, be, make you pure uh, without spot and without wrinkle. Uh, uh, when Jesus comes back, he's coming for a pure bride. Be a good steward. Steward. And let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.12. You know, you can read the whole chapter on, of these topics. These is, this is just a Bible study and reference points to get some of the nuggets out of, uh, of this about accountability. Once you go through training, once you go through a Bible school, once you go through a conference, or you go through the training, it's like if it's of God, He will give you the impartation and raise you up to a new level. And that way you can learn, use what you're, you've learned, and then eventually you'll get raised up into another level. And you'll have to keep learning new things because that's who God is. He helps us to grow and grow in the things of God. So you can grow in the things of the world and do the things in the world, but that's not going to give you to a heavenly place and heavenly reward. So focus on heaven, focus on God and, and Jesus, and, and get out of those things that he's asking you to get out of. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So if you're in a church um, and they're not preaching the truth, it says right here, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So if they can't possibly bring uh, you to the place where you need to be, if they're going to preach a dirty message. Preaching a dirty message saying it's okay to drink alcohol. And I took that situation to the heavenly courts and uh, you know I, I get beat up pretty bad by the body of Christ that wants to, the junk inside of them is, is so nasty sometimes and they need purging and pruning that they want to vent their frustration on me. And I am not the punching bag of the body of Christ. I've taken many hits and gotten many bruises and many uh, whippings I feel. Um, by the body of Christ because they do not want to repent. Many people are walking in purity, but there are many people that are refusing and rejecting the pure message. In the, uh, a situation, not only I had to handle it, but my overseer in ministry, who is the regional director, uh, uh, who is in Wisconsin, I'm in Minnesota, um, uh, was coming under attack as well because this woman wanted to drink alcohol and she wanted to promote alcohol and God spoke to me in the heavenly courts after that injustice of her wanting to come and help me in ministry and hold my arms up uh, but then she wanted to preach a, me to preach a dirty message and she want, I felt like she just wanted to hold my arms up and punch me in the face and so she never truly repented to me uh, and repent, repenting the process of my level of authority as an apostle, thinking she can do and compare herself to me over and over again, thinking she can do what I can do, but not wanting to walk in the purity. I will not promote somebody doing that, and my overseer told me to disassociate with her and gave me the scripture reference. So when somebody comes to you and wants you to preach a dir dirty message saying it's okay to drink in sin, I went to the heavenly courts with that injustice, and I, and. I got an answer from the Lord, and it was very clear. The Lord spoke, uh, God from the heavenly courts said, anyone preaching drinking is not a sin is a liability to the church. So if you have a pastor that's preaching it's okay to drink, they're a liability to the church, and that's God's church. 
you know, as he oversees this, you see changes in division and uh, plantings and uh, these things. A lot of people are growing fast without being obedient, and they're not willing to take that step and say, um, drinking is a sin, drinking alcohol. You know, a lot of people are smoking. So, uh, anybody that is smoking anything is a sin. So as even food and uh, gluttony and the things that we do uh, to try to keep ourselves healthy even make us sick. You know, for example, drinking water out of plastic bottles can be toxic, especially if you refill them for the second time like I did 18 years. Um, and I try to do the right thing by, on a fast, uh, getting off. Um, I believe God delivered me from drinking pop, the diet and the regular and I drank a lot of water. So as those toxins will get into our body, our bodies can't handle everything. So, it, you know, whether it was something that I did intentionally or not, you know, we all struggle in different areas. However, um, the church leadership has to know how to be healthy and how to impart that. So as I just read 12, uh, know those who labor among you and who are over you in the Lord. So know those around you, and if they're not willing to walk the walk, of the scriptures that they're they're talking, then you just head here to the Holy Spirit and say, you know, God, do you want me to hear? Sometimes he has us shake the dust off our feet. And there's a Bible verse for that. If you don't know that, you can Google Let's it. Let's go to Psalm 22, verse 30. We're working through uh, scriptures to be accountable. Uh, we have this accountability as chapter 28 in our second discipleship book. It's actually Handbook B. And um, Psalm 2230 says, A seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. You know, when I think about even just the word generation and a seed, um, we, as we grow in the things of the Lord and mature in the things of the Lord, we're tested and purified and refined and uh, purged and all of those different things. But what God wants most is for us to impart our gifts to the next generation. As I'm doing to you, imparting the Word of God and the testimonies and uh, getting rid of the fears and the doubts and the unbeliefs, as we process a lot of that uh, stuff in our own lives, we can impart that knowledge to the next generation. So a seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted to the Lord uh, for a generation. I have to go back and read the whole uh, verse to say it's uh, more than that. However, God will take a scripture out there out of context to show you something. He will speak an answer to you if the scripture is out of context. It might not be about the whole uh, Bible chapter. It might just be about an answer to something you've asked. It might be a correction to something you were believing that wasn't Him. For example, I asked when uh, Timothy McVeigh was getting, uh, was, I believe it was lethal injection, and I was praying for him to be born again. And um, uh, I said, God, it's your will that none shall perish. And I knew that part of the scripture. I had, had retained that many years ago. But then in the Word of God, He wanted me to know the rest of the Scripture, and I preach out of that, 2 Peter 3, 9. It's God's will that none shall perish, but all come to repentance. So He wanted me to know that second part, but all come to repentance. When I, however, as much as I knew, I asked God in prayer, I said, God, it's your will that none shall perish. He said, thank you for reminding me. I heard God's voice clearly. And uh, I think it was a year later, a Catholic woman came to me and uh, uh, called me and told me that, uh, in a conversation. She didn't call me just for that, but she said, I think the Lord wants you to know that Timothy McVeigh gave his life before he died. So, you know, as we're held accountable, we can do a lot wrong in our life. That anger, unforgiveness, and uh, rejection, and uh, all that stuff. And there's people in the land that are not walking in any of the Holy Scriptures. They're doing evil unto the Holy Ones. So we're going to be held accountable. As that man, I believe, went to heaven, um, I didn't know, but God said thank you for uh, reminding him of this scripture. He wants us to talk to him in the scripture. So as I'm talking about accountability, um, you know, that was just me talking to God and him saying thank you. 
I didn't know the whole verse, but he, he gave me uh, credit. He just said thank you when I, when I asked for that thing, that prayer. Many people just say he should die and perish and go to hell, but I, I have a heart. I don't want to see anyone perish, uh, no one. So I know for all eternity, if we can get everyone to heaven, uh, it's much uh, better than having to deal with the corruption and the things that we have to process on earth. Um, and uh, I'd like to go to uh, Psalm 144, verse 3. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Man is likely to vanity. Man is like to vanity. His days are as shadow that passes away. As I'm not uh, reading the whole Bible verse, there's so much you can learn. You can just write down. Um, when I'm the the scriptures, if you want to do the study, uh, we have the the manuals. But you can go read from the beginning of the chapter, the whole chapter, and get the full context. However, God might speak to you with that scripture out of context, because Second Peter three nine, I will use in prayer, and I will use it to preach. Uh, but I would have to go back and reread it to tell you exactly what the whole chapter says. So as God takes things out of context, sometimes it's for a specific reason, a specific answer. So I'm just using these topics, um, the topical uh, for um, this study. Daniel 6.2. I'll just start at verse 1. It pleases Darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom, verse 2, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. So God places people in levels where they have to give, people have to give account to them, and it's proper order to give account, a pure account to the Lord, and it's uh, God's will that we walk in, um, do uh, our business in with integrity um, and he will hold us accountable in this life or the next life and hopefully we'll we'll see some the body of Christ in my impartation even even through teaching ethics that um, to help people uh, stay with clean hands and pure hearts and pure motives before the Lord and if they do if you do that to the Lord and you know you're walking in purity with clean hands and pure hearts, no matter what anybody can come and falsely accuse you of, you know you're right with God, and for eternity you have that blessing. So you might have to defend yourself. However, it's easier to move on sometimes and not continue to defend yourself. Just make the, uh, the point that God wants made and then move on um, and do the rest of the work that He has. There's always something to do for the God. There's never a dull moment. Um, when you seek the Lord, there's no reason you have to be in the bars or in beds of you don't belong in. Um, and there's a lot of people doing that. Matthew 12, 22 through 37, as I do my part, um, God expects you to do your part, even if it means uh, you bring in correction. I think I'm speaking to somebody right now. God is saying, I think it's a woman, and he's saying, uh, you have children living in your home that are not married, and he doesn't approve of that. That is fornication. Um, and I'm not sure who I'm speaking to, but it could be more than just that woman. Generally, when I see God speaking to one person, it's a multitude of people. So uh, in that situation, it could be a man as well. It could be the, the people living in the fornication. We're on Matthew... I believe 12, verse 22 through 37. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is it is not the son of David? Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought 
to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come to you. Or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except if he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? Verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Verse 32, And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Verse 33, Either make the tree good and his fruit, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. Verse 34, A generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good fruit, good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, every that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. I'm talking about accountability today, um, and these are the Bible verses that we're using uh, in this Bible study um, that I've created. Um, for discipleship. You know, we can go back in any of this um, and pick out something that God has asked people to do. Um, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. You know, going into some of this, when did the church, church stop casting out devils? You know, going into some of these things where um, I've walked into a church and somebody's asked me to pray the the a uh, minister at the church has asked me to pray for a woman. And the woman had, I, I feel, you know, she's at the altar. The second time I part I prayed for her, I had her go to the altar. And, and as she knelt down, I prayed for her standing behind her. And I felt pain thinking, you know, I see so many people on the street people and that are missing teeth. I thought maybe she had an infection in her, her jaw, but I felt pain in my hand. And I said, what's going on? Now she had her face towards the cross and I was behind her so she couldn't see me but I could feel that pain in her jaw and I said what's going on in the left side and she said I have a demon in my left eye and so as as we uh, bind them and ask God to remove them or cast them out uh, to the feet of Jesus or uh, those things a lot of the church doesn't understand that People are walking in sin and they're doing things and they can't get free. And they don't know to go to the church. They're afraid to go to the church. They don't want to go to the church because that means repentance. And they don't even want to go to a shelter sometimes because that means repentance. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, dysfunction uh, in, in the world. And there's a lot of people that will walk right by people that really need help. So... As we're talking about accountability, God might give you these situations to see what you'll do, um, how you'll handle it. Um, but the most important thing is He wants us to love people. Let's go to Matthew 18. I'm just going to read these rest of these scripture, some of these scriptures, and I'll give you the rest of them for reference for accountability. If you want to do that, you can get a pen if you don't have one handy. Um, Matthew 18, verse 23. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. So accountability is not anything new. We're reading these scriptures. about. Let's go to Mark 10, uh, 42. 
But Jesus called them to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. Um, you, you know, you have to read the whole chapter and specifically if God is speaking to you. So I'll read Luke 16, verse 2. Read uh, Luke 21, verse 36. Read Acts 19, verse 40. Romans 14, 1 through 23. 1 Corinthians 4, 1. Galatians 3, 6. Hebrews 13, 1 through 25. And 1 Peter 4, 1 through 19. Let me read those again to you where we I'll just give you all the scriptures that I had and you can write them down if you or if you're writing them down starting from the beginning 1 Peter 4:5 1 Corinthians 4:1 Titus 1:7 1, 1 Thessalonians 5:12 I referenced uh, all of Luke 6 uh, Psalm 22:30 Psalm 144, 3, Daniel 6, 2, Matthew 12, verses 22 through 37, Matthew 18, 23, Mark 10, verse 42, Luke 16, verse 2, Luke 21, verse 36, Acts 19, verse 40, Romans 14, 1 through 23, 1 Corinthians 4, 1, Galatians 3, 6, Hebrews 13, 1 through 25, and 1 Peter 4, 1 through 19. In the Bible study, uh, this one uh, specifically has uh, some questions I can read to you. Uh, what Bible verse listed says, But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Question number two, what Bible verse listed says, So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Question number three, what Bible verse listed said, Obey them that have the, the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. That's I didn't touch on that one. I didn't get have enough time to do that one, but you should really uh, look that one up and uh, uh, remember that one. Obey them, them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. If somebody's watching for your souls, you know if it's a pure message or if it's not a pure message, you have to take a look. Who are you going to follow? Those that are preaching the pure message or those that are preaching the dirty message? And I wouldn't follow the ones that are preaching the dirty message. They will go down, and the ones pre uh, preaching the pure message will go up. That's the level of accountability God will have on us as teachers of the Word. Um, it's uh, important to know that. Do not follow uh, those going down the road of sin. Um, Ask God what to do. Uh, question number four, verse listed. What verse listed says, Pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience and all things willing to live honestly. Uh, question number five, what Bible verse listed says, And every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Uh, question number six, what Bible verse listed says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Some of these I did not have time to go through, uh, but I gave you all the scriptures you can research and uh, uh, for accountability. Uh, um, we're going to be using uh, our, our Bible studies for our own Bible school, uh, and they're available uh, um, on our website at cometothefountain.tv. Uh, just go to the tab that says um, BSBN, which is Bible Study and Books Nonprofit, which is our Bible Study and Books, our, our material uh, that you can have. Uh, you can uh, call and order 
order what you, what you like on there. We've got, I think right now we've got maybe 10 books on, on there, uh, nine are ready, uh, but they would, we have a printer and we've got everything in place. We're just doing some fine tuning of, uh, of the um, editing. So I hope you enjoyed the show, Accountability. Don't worry if you've done something wrong. If you want to repent, ask God how to do it and ask your overseer or, or get into the church where God is asking you to go. Be obedient to God whatever, whatever, be obedient to God, whatever he asks you to do. Um, I'm going to pray. I'd like to pray for you before we go. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for those that are watching. I pray that you bless them and help them if they haven't given their lives to you. To just say the prayer, God, please forgive my sin and help me be accountable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't given your life to the Lord, giving him a prayer uh, for salvation, just ask him to forgive your sin and that you receive your salvation, that you believe that Jesus died for you. Uh, and and he, he's waiting for, with open arms uh, for you. He created you. He's our creator. God bless you. I'm Apostle Julie Hardigan, and this has come to the Fountain TV.